Hello everybody. So this week, the practice is going to be centered on a seated movement. Um, and in keeping with this month's blog post, which is getting more out of less, we're going to be repeating this one movement for the duration of the video so that I can just quickly run through a quick list of things that we might pay attention to, focus on, move with intention, keep quiet with intention while we use this one movement, okay? So I'm going to leave it up to you to decide when you need a little break, um, how quickly or slowly you move. I want you to kind of experiment with it and just see how everything lands in your body and be open to broadening your attention to other areas that maybe don't first come to mind when you think of a seated spinal twist. Now I'm doing this on the floor and if you are also going to do this on the floor, I highly recommend that you grab something that you can sit on that's going to allow your hips to be a little higher than your knees. This is just going to make sitting up tall much easier. Otherwise, you can absolutely do this sitting in a chair and just try to make sure that your feet can make contact with the floor. So if that means you need to grab some blocks or books to bring the floor up to your feet, um, do that rather than having your legs dangling, okay? So Georgie and I are going to get started. I'm just going to be bringing my hands together kind of in front of my chest just to sort of keep them out of the picture for now. And we are going to just begin to twist. All right, so in this particular twist, we're looking to really just target the spine. Can you twist through your spine with ease and without too much force? Okay, bringing your attention to your legs, you might notice if they are trying to help. So in a cross-legged position like me, you may notice a little bit of shifting through the legs, a little bit of pushing off with the sides of your foot on the floor. If you're sitting in a chair, you might notice a similar thing. Maybe your seat, your, your bum is moving on the seat. Maybe your knees are shifting forward and back out to the side. Maybe you're pushing off with your foot. You can take a moment to really get the legs moving to feel how they might help you twist. And then once you've familiarized yourself with that, start to quiet the legs. Push off with the feet a little less. Keep the legs a little quieter. Keep the bum on the chair still. And this isn't gonna come from locking the legs down. This is simply gonna come from maybe your twist becomes smaller and slower so that you can concentrate that movement at the spine. And in this, you might simply notice how much of the movement through your spine is given momentum via your lower body, okay? We may also start to pay attention to the quality of the twist. So as you come to your end range, are you kind of having to try just a little bit harder to twist just a little bit further? And, and what happens and what does it feel like if you don't, don't go that far? Just keep it within a really light, easy range. You might take an opportunity to notice your head and neck. Are you, like me, keeping your head and neck in line with your breastbone? Or are you adding the neck and head into the twist? Now, if you are, that's totally fine. Your neck is a part of your spine and this is a spinal twist. But it might be interesting to take a moment to notice, am I twisting less than I think through my spine and making up for it by turning my head? How much twist do I have? just from my spine versus how much can I add with my neck and head. It's just observing. It's just noticing where you move easiest from and what you might use more often to achieve something. In this twist, we can also bring our attention to the breath. So first off, I'm gonna get you to do the unconventional thing and you're going to inhale as you twist. 
and exhale as you come back to center. Inhale as you twist to the other side. Exhale as you come back to center. You can keep doing that and you can just notice what does the quality of your breath feel like? How easy is it to breathe or not easy is it to breathe? How does the movement of your rib cage feel when you're twisting and trying to breathe in? Does it change how much twist you have available to you? How is breathing that way affecting your movement? Now, if you try breathing in a more conventional way with a twist, we typically, like wringing water out of a cleaning rag, we would exhale on the twist and inhale as we come back to center. Exhale to twist. Inhale back to center. Notice the difference there. Now, how does the breath feel in your body? Now, how does the rib cage feel like it can expand? Now, how does the quality of the movement change? How does the ease of the movement change? All right. So again, just noticing how your breath can impact a movement. You could also try holding your breath, right? Because it's not uncommon for people to forget to breathe when they're exercising, right? So just try not holding your breath or try holding your breath. And again, notice, how does that change your twist? How does that change how things feel in your body as you try to do this movement? And then come back to breathing out as you twist, breathing in as you come back to center, breathing out as you twist, and breathing in as you come back to center. All right? So you can see that with this simple seated twist, there was just a few key things we really just zoomed in on. If and what the legs are doing to help, how much of the movement can come from your main part of your spine versus how much does your neck and head want to help or need to help? How does breath affect your movement? How does it help your movement? And overall, just in general, what is a nice, easy, smooth, not forced twist feel and look like in your body? All right, so keep playing with this movement. You might observe yourself out in the wild when you're shoulder checking in your car. How much of it is with your neck and how much do you involve your body? Turning to talk to a friend, turning to reach for something. Just start to notice your twists a little bit more in real life and just see if you can find some of those things that we observed today and just see how they relate to your real life. All right, I will see you next time.